I first became passionate about climate change, um, I think I was 10, and it gradually happened because I realised that this was a huge problem as soon as I found out about what it was and that no one was doing anything about it and no one seemed to be talking about it, which really surprised me. Hi, my name is Lucy, I'm 12 and I'm passionate about climate change and making a difference in the world. I started a group called Global Group with some of my friends and Global Group is essentially a group of me and my friends who wanted to educate as many people as we could about climate change. I got involved organising the school strike for climate in Christchurch because I heard about the international strike and I thought this is an amazing opportunity, there's going to be strikes in New Zealand and I thought okay let's get in touch with the organisers so I got in touch with the organisers and said is there anyone running it for Christchurch and they said that there hadn't been anyone who had offered which kind of puzzled me because Christchurch is a big city and we are going to be affected. I remember thinking someone's going to organise it so I waited and got in touch with the organisers again and still no one. So I thought, why wait for someone older, someone more experienced, because I can do this. I put my hand up and I'm really glad I did. On the actual day of the strike, it was amazing. We had almost 3,000 people. It was incredible. Everyone was there with their signs and there was so much diversity and it was just amazing to see everyone come together. We had speakers, we had singers, we had music. I performed my song called Rise Up and I did a speech and it was, it was like nothing I've seen before. It was like everyone who was passionate but didn't know what to do just came out of their shell and was like, I know where I belong, I know what to do now. We had politicians, we had climate scientists, we had so many people there there to support us. And even though our call to action is going to them saying this is our future, we need you to change, they rose up and said, we accept your challenge, we will do our best. And that's exactly what we wanted to hear. One thing I've learned is definitely you don't need to be old for your voice to be heard in these big conversations. Our planet requires us. Tine o tine o, kamehi kia rangi, kamehi kia papa, kamehi kia tane, kia to, kia to, kia to. Mori ora ki tarangi, mori ora ki te papa, mori ora ki ngā kai ora, mori ora ki te tangata. Ko rangi, kei ronga, he umai rangi, he wai ora mo papa, he wai ora mo tāne, he wai ora mo te tangata. Huie, mori ora e. Ko aureku toko maunga, ko ruahini toko waka, ko opawaha toko awa, ko Ngāti Pākehā a ko Tarana toko iwi, ko Grey toko hapu, ko Anne toko Spire, ko Stuart toko mātua, ko Hannah toko tuakana, Ko Lucy toko ingoa, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. This mihi is the very beginning of my story. It acknowledges the Sky Father, the Earth Mother, the treasures of the forest and the rivers. It reminds me that this is where we came from, where we will return to, and that without this Earth, we are nothing. This is my standing place, my tūranga waiwai. You've just seen a video that tells you a little bit about my story. My story is centered on one key question. How is it that for over 50 years, we have known that climate breakdown poses a threat to life on Earth, and we've done nothing? And this has got me asking, how is it that climate breakdown is not front page news every day? How is it that we're not all talking about this? When I was confronted by the urgency and the scale of the crisis, I did the obvious thing to me. I took action, making day-to-day -day changes in my life, changes that as an individual I had the power to make. However, I also realized that this crisis is too big for us to be facing alone. So I started having conversations with others Talking to friends, family and peers grew into talking to community groups, community boards, running strikes and talking to schools and standing alongside 1.5 million people across the world on the 15th of March during Aotearoa's first climate strike. This was about young people all around the world taking a stand, rising up and saying enough is enough. Little did I know that taking the stand would lead to meeting with leaders, politicians, environmental legend Jane Goodall, 
and becoming a national co-convener for School Strike for Climate. I never imagined that I would have these opportunities. However, they have not been without challenges. You wouldn't believe the number of people that at 12 claimed I was brainwashed, that I didn't understand, that climate change is unsolvable. One politician even said their little protest is not going to help the world one bit. Some people can underestimate youth and may not think that they struggle with the big issues like the climate crisis. But young people showing up, being seen, and walking out of school says loud and clear, this matters to us. We also need to acknowledge that caring deeply about our planet is a hard path, one where anxiety and depression can spread into swamp us. With the climate crisis feeling like it's looming over us, we must support each other. As a young person who struggles with anxiety, I know how important it is to speak out about these issues. Don't be afraid to reach out. A good friend of mine, Gemma, said something that really inspired me. And when I was afraid of sharing my weaker side, she looked at me and said honestly, no, this is your stronger side. And it stuck with me, and I really hope it sticks with you. To sustain ourselves and this cause, we need to look out for each other. We need to share our passions and our challenges. For me, Tūranga Waiwai is as much who I am with as it is where I am from. I have found a place to stand alongside those who care deeply about our planet, who want to speak out, take action, and strive for justice. Through this journey, I've learned that you don't have to wait for someone else to do it. You don't have to wait until you're older to make a difference, and you certainly do not have to wait until you're older to follow your passion, because you will learn along the way. I've learned that there will be challenges you face, but it's overcoming them that matters. I've learned that you don't have to let them stop you from being who you want to be and being who you are. So why is it urgent that we come together and have these conversations? Well, our futures are hanging in the balance and the facts are compelling. Climate change is affecting us with higher temperatures, sea level rise, ocean acidification, extinction of plants and animals, melting of glaciers, and the list goes on. But these facts do not really paint the social toll. Climate refugees, as close as our Pacific neighbours, are losing their homes right now. The widening gap between those without and those with enough, the threat of conflict over resource scarcity, and growing anxiety and mental health statistics, just to name a few. The social toll is massive, and so we can't have a conversation about climate change without also talking about climate justice and recognising that those who are the least responsible for climate change are going to suffer the most. Conversations are necessary to take this global challenge and use it as an opportunity, a vehicle for positive change, to create a more just world. This is a chance to come together and work together. So how do we do this? We need to share our thoughts respectfully and come at issues with an open mind. If we do not have a world where people, no matter the colour of their skin, their sexuality, their age, their status or their ideology can feel listened to and safe, we need to change. If people in our society do not feel heard, we need to change. No matter who or what they identify, we must change. If the spaces for everyone to be themselves are not there, we must create them. I have always been passionate about justice. Always because it didn't make sense to me, and maybe it still doesn't. Why wouldn't you want justice? Why wouldn't you want to be willing to invest in renewable and sustainable energy? Why wouldn't you want a healthy future for everyone? Why wouldn't you want to put an end to all injustices? I may be naive, but I know this much, and that's that we need to change. We need to speak out when we see injustice. We need to keep asking the obvious questions, and we need to work together to create a more just world. Standing alongside the other people who share the same values as me has led me to find my Tūranga Waiwai. Wonderful, individual, amazing people. The future is now. This is it. We are the future. Me and you. It's in our hands, our choice, our life. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke a quote that I believe has touched hearts and changed minds wide and far, and that is injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. 
Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Thank you.